Okay, so I promise this is the last time until tomorrow afternoon that you have to bear with me and my voice. But you have to bear with me for, for 30 to 45 minutes now. Uh, so I already said it, let me repeat. Uh, I've been uh, paying a very special interest into uh, the world of uh, variable computing. A little bit on Internet of Things, but mostly really variable computing because this is definitely going to change the world of multimedia. And uh, through that, I learned a few things. And I thought maybe I share it with you. At least, you know, you may agree or disagree. I hope there are areas you will disagree because this is how I learn things. And don't hesitate to, to interrupt me even if you have any, any question. But don't forget this is actually being recorded. So. If you want to say stupid things, you know. So I'm planning not to say too many stupid things, but, uh, but you never know. Uh, so what I think makes this event, and also my own interest, kind of interesting uh, in a sense is that we are really, like anything else in life, uh, it's not one trend that has impact on our lives and our societies, our businesses. Um, there are several trends that they joined, and then somehow this interaction gives something. Uh, that's why it's very important that people who are active in different areas and have different visions from different sides, they really talk to each other. Because we, if we, we imprison ourselves in only our field of expertise and interest, uh, we forget actually there are some other trends also are happening and then we just miss it, right? And then things are not necessarily what, how, how we thought they will be in future. Now these three areas, one is communications, one is sensing, and one is the analytics. Now in terms of things, some people say, well, in terms of things are things that have sensors and they can communicate. So at the, at the intersection here, you could, you, could, you could already say Internet of Things, or uh, if it is, has to do with people, people wear it, you could say variables. Uh, but as I hope we will see and hear several times, uh, it's not really only the device. It's really the data that is generated that, uh, that makes it. And there are a lot of things happening in analytics also. These three trends, in my opinion, are really, some of them have been around, of course, communication has, has already had a lot of uh, uh, impact in the way we live and uh, we work. Um, but there is more and more sensing and analytics that are also changing the way we live. And uh, this intersection is somewhere, but I think, where this world of variable computing and smart variable uh, is happening. Now. Um, but let's not forget, uh, well, wearables is nothing new. Well, you all have wearable devices, well, things, right, to protect ourselves. Uh, but if you put even your clothing and shoes and things like that, that protect mainly yourself against uh, uh, cold or, or, or the environment in general, um, when you go a little bit more into Technological things, wearable have been around for quite a while, right? Now on purpose, I put a, a wristwatch and a pocket watch. So many people don't have this pocket watch, but you know, let's not forget, watches were not all on the wrist, right? They used to be even in your pocket, uh, not so long time ago. And uh, in fact, we are now back to it, right? Because uh, most youngsters, they actually have their watches in their pocket. It's their mobile phone, right? Uh, so, uh, so there are things like that that have been around. Of course, in the domain of sport, uh, all these pedometers are, are wearables. You wear them, and it gives you information about how many steps you made. Uh, of course, uh, to correct uh, some of your, your uh, 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 weaknesses, like if you, you do not see well, you, we, we wear uh, uh, glasses, right? Eyeglasses for correction. Uh, sunglasses, if there is too much... Uh, a, a, a sun and a light. So, you know, these have been really around. And we have used also uh, for quite a while uh, since uh, 
the start of Walkman, uh, wearable devices that even give us some interesting entertainment, right? So there's nothing really new, right? So this generation existed. I don't want to pretend that I know exactly when it started, but it has been around for at least one century, if not several centuries, right? And of course, um, one question, and we're going to have uh, in the afternoon uh, a presentation uh, um, uh, around like experiences learned from smart watch space and how it can be actually transported into wearables. Uh, smart watches uh, are maybe just an evolution of uh, mobile phones. At least some people think about this, or at least some people think that even smart phones are some sort of wearables. Because like the watch that I told you that you put in your pocket, uh, well, you, the smartphone you put in your pocket, so somehow you wear it. It's not exactly wearing it, but it's it's on your body, right? And it, can, it is always with you. Of course, uh, we hear since a few years, as I told you, a lot of, uh, a lot of things about, uh, about uh, wearable uh, 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 smart watches. Uh, everybody knows the one on the, on the left, uh, uh, bottom left. Uh, uh, well, the, uh, the, the bottom, uh, the, the top left uh, is, is just one of many uh, uh, existing, uh, also competing uh, uh, smart watches uh, to, uh, to the Apple Watch. Uh, they, uh, they, they more or less have all the same uh, look and feel, right? They, they, they really look like watches. Of course, some of the watches, this is Pebble. Maybe some of you uh, even wear them. Uh, Pebble was one of the early uh, uh, players. It, was, uh, it doesn't have any sensors, and it relies heavily, like the Apple Watch, on your smart device. So it, alone, it doesn't really do much. Uh, it has a few interesting features, but it's mainly a second screen, right? Hooked into your, your smart watch, and the sensors actually are the sensors of the smartwatch. So you can, Pebble can tell you how much you walked, how much calorie you, you spent, and things like that. But uh, it's not the watch itself that does it. It's the smartphone to which it is connected that does that. Of course, there is another uh, parallel trend, and this is, you, people call it differently. I just choose one of them, fitness tracker. Some people call it uh, fitness bands. Uh, there are all sorts of names uh, for it around. It's not necessarily a watch. Usually, it doesn't even have displays. Uh, it doesn't necessarily tell you the time uh, and the date. Uh, but it is very popular, too. In fact, uh, there are companies like Fitbit. Uh, there are companies like uh, Jawbone. They, they are doing uh, quite, uh, quite a lot of uh, um, things uh, using. This is a Jawbone, for instance. Uh, these devices usually, and currently at least, they have a very, very uh, limited uh, uh, number of sensors. Uh, most of them, they just have accelerometers. Uh, um, some of them, they have also heart rate uh, uh, detector. And just with just a few of these, just a few of these, if you send them to a server and it is analyzed, it can actually give you lots of interesting information about uh, uh, you. For instance, if you're sleeping, it can make a difference not only between when you really went to, into sleep or not. It can even estimate, now the big question of course is how accurate it is, between uh, how deep was your sleep, how long light sleep you had, and even how, which part of your, your sleep was rapid eye movement, right, when you dream uh, part, right? Uh, so there is a lot, a lot also happening there, right? Now, of course, uh, sometimes, and I'm, I'm not going to put uh, this uh, just as a joke, because unfortunately, it's not just a joke. There is, there is reality. Some of, I didn't want to put any actual product, but some of the wearable products, and especially smartwatches, they really look like they are just there to be there, but they have no use, right? So, so we have to be very careful not to push it, push it too far. I don't know if uh, anybody has seen, some of them are very, very old, so maybe, maybe the, the, two, the two I put here, these are fictional, right? So this is 
Um, this is a this is a mobile phone that is in the show. I'm sure that you know this uh, this uh, this is uh, this TV uh, 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 actor, and uh, this is a cartoon, right? Uh, uh, and the guy is uh, like a robot and has all sorts of gadgets coming out of his his uh, his, his his body. Uh, but in fact, uh, uh, there long time not long time ago, there were there were really people advocating this kind of things, right? So this is uh, this is the predecessor of Google Glass, right? Yeah. So so for people who uh, who don't who, who don't want to wipe out their 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 their, their, their eyeglasses. Uh, but um, beside this, uh, one thing I want to emphasize is that don't get fooled by some of the uh, wrong terms in terms of smart variables. Like everything else in life, some people take it right, some people take it wrong, and it's just part of the process to have also failures part of the process to have sometimes less uh, interesting and next impactful outcomes. Uh, what it's, in my opinion, and please disagree with me, is that I think in long term, all variables, and when I say all variables, it's really all variables, like anything you wear, are going to become smart. And please disagree with me, OK? But we're talking here long term. And uh, just to make my point, I want to give you a few examples. These are not long term. Many of these things, they already exist. You can buy them. Some of them are prototypes. They have been announced to be, to be available uh, shortly. Now, now just, to, just to make it a little bit more fun and interactive, uh, anybody knows what is this one? This is a belt. Especially useful for me, because uh, this is a belt actually called Welt, W-E-L-T, by Samsung. It's a smart belt. What it does is that if you eat too much, it actually changes its, uh, its, its size. For me, it's very useful. You know, I, I have broken, uh, you know, it's bad it is on record. Uh, <laughs> I, I've broken a lot of belts after eating, you know, you, you sit, uh, you know then it explodes, right? Uh, so, so this could have been very useful. But actually, it does more than that. It actually has sensors uh, that give you information about, uh, about even your steps. It gives you information, a lot of information that you have, in fact, in, in, in the regular uh, 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 health bands and things like that. So it's just a belt. And this, uh, this was actually shown at CES 2016, earlier this year. And it has been claim to become uh, 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 released soon. Maybe, maybe some of you were in, uh, in there, you maybe tried it. Uh, who knows this one? Not the girl, no. what she's wearing. <laughs> yeah? That's a smart bra. And it does also all sorts of, uh, it has a lot of sensors. It can obviously take the uh, heart rate, but actually a number of other things it can do. In fact, some of them, they, uh, there are, not this one, uh, this particular one, but there are actually versions of it, and it's not a joke, you can buy them. These are bras that when uh, the, uh, some emotional uh, 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 information is detected on, on the person, so if the person is meeting somebody they like, it actually uh, opens up. I'm, I'm not joking, just Google it, it is there. Right, so so this is one of the mishaps, right? So this don't don't take that. Of course, this is ridiculous, but there are serious ones, and this one actually you can buy it. It's if you if you like to do sports and run, and uh, you know it helps you. You don't need to to really wear anything. A lot of people run with this kind of uh, 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 wearables, and uh, they run. So it's you know it keeps. You don't need to have a watch. You don't need to have your 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 phone. Who knows uh, who knows this one? This is a Chinese manufacturer of, of, uh, of shoes, sports shoes, that has same, similar type of sensors in them. Of course, uh, also Nike has some devices, but it's not really in the shoes. They, they do it a little bit differently. They have small devices you can put in the shoes, right? 
and it again uh, does a lot of tracking. What about the one year? Who knows this one? This is a device you can buy since about a year. It's a smart ring. And it has all sorts of sensors you find also on watches. But you don't need to put it on the wrist. You're just putting it on your finger. Now keep this in mind because at some point we have to talk about what is the best place to put that. And it's not necessarily wearables on the wrist that are the best places. These are examples of it. There are more examples, right? Another one you can buy similar to the, to the, to the, to the smart uh, uh, bras is, is uh, smart uh, shirts. You can buy these things. They hook into your mobile phone and they give you all sorts of information with the sensors they have that you have here. Uh, this is another one. Uh, this one um, also, you know, has sensors in different places and uh, and and gives you gives you interesting interesting information that you need. So wearable is not necessarily only on your wrist. That's the message, okay? But of course, many wearables want to be on your wrist today. At least this is this is the mainstream. Yeah, some of them they actually look like watches. <coughs> Right, At some of the some of the smart uh, com phone companies. This is a, this is not even very recent, but uh, Motorola has its Moto 360 smartwatch that they try to make it round. It's very rare to find round actually, smartwatches. But we have, we're going to have a presentation today of another round smartwatch, right? Uh, uh, the Tago Air. Uh, this one also is actually smartwatch. It doesn't look like it. Uh, there are many 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 smart watches, many smart wearables that actually are to are, have the look and the functionality, at least from outside, of, of just any, any smart watches. Uh, you know, just, just, just to share with you a little bit more, I've been looking around. Uh, smart watches, where they have been used. And I couldn't find more than three type of usage. You could either use your smart uh, uh, wrist-based wearable, so smart watch, as a second screen. So it's actually connected to your mobile phone. Pebble is a good example of it. And if you receive emails, it either vibrates or it, uh, it displays uh, part of the thing. If you have uh, SMS or messages, you, you receive it on your wrist, uh, this kind of things. Uh, uh, or, you know, the second screen doesn't necessarily need to be visual or even uh, audio. It can be by, by haptic, right, vibration. There are maps uh, where you have to go turn left and right, etc. It just vibrates. So you know that if you're walking, you know, oh, now I have to change. Go left or right. Of course, there, there you have to look uh, then. But you don't need to look all the time, the, the, the map. You, you just know when you have to look it with this vibration. The other one uh, where there is, there is a lot of use, increasing use, is smart watches that are actually watches, more or less, maybe electronic watches, but they have sensors in them. That's a second really class cluster of uses. Now, a third one that not many are doing, but I think it's interesting also to pay attention, is watches that are actually hubs, <coughs> communication hubs. These are watches. That, um, that receive from different sensors you may have even on other variables on your body, information, and then relate to the cloud. And you think about it, it makes a lot of sense, especially if you want to have low power or even no power uh, sensors. And necessarily, it's not necessarily even through the wireless uh, communication, Bluetooth or, or any type of uh, uh, wireless communication, it can use your body because your watch usually is connected to your wrist, so it touches skin. It means that if another sensor usually touches also your skin, you could actually use your, your body as a, as a conduit. And the, you could show actually that it, this can actually become, at, in some situation, energetically more efficient than just sending it wirelessly. And there are all sorts of problems with wireless, right? One of them is that somebody can tap into you, right? And get all this information also from your sensors. Uh, from your body, they have to touch you, or they have to 
because it's it's not it's not radiating any information. So there are all sorts of you know things that are happening here. Uh, I hope you like my Apple Watch. Yeah. Uh, cheapest Apple Watch, right? Um, now another area where uh, variables and smart variables are 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 pretty uh, popular, or at least used to be now. Some some in some cases less, in some cases more, is 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 the face, right? So the face after wrist is where you see also a lot of variables. So Google Glass is good, a good example of it, but we know that Google Glass, you know, was a big hype, and then after what that disappeared, but it doesn't really completely disappear. You see actually a lot of other variant of smart glasses that have been around, that uh, these are a few examples of it. Even some very respective com uh, respectful company like Sony have, 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 have products on that. Uh, but maybe, uh, well, the next really generation is this kind of, uh, this kind of um, devices. So I, de I decided to only put devices that exist and you can buy. So everything I showed you now that you have uh, on your face uh, are, are examples of things that exist. Uh, some of them are even, you know, used to be sold. They are even out of, you know, they don't, uh, Google Glass, you cannot even buy it anymore. You could buy it on eBay because it's a, it's a vintage product now, it's, uh, uh, right? Uh, but, uh, but there are actually quite a few of these, uh, Devices that are in labs, in fact, in some uh, secretive even companies. A good example is uh, the Magic Leap. Who knows Magic Leap? Yes, so some of you know Magic Leap, exactly. So Magic Leap, uh, not going into the details, nobody really knows what they, they are doing, but they are doing some sort of smart glasses. Hopefully it won't be as bulky and ugly as, uh, as this one. Uh, that uh, that uh, that people uh, are supposed to wear, and uh, it will uh, it will uh, it will have the look and feel of things like the Hololens uh, by Microsoft, uh, and uh, they they are very secretive what they are doing, but they have received almost 1.4 billion dollar of investment from Google, half a billion, from uh, Alibaba, more than half a billion. We're talking about billion, not, not million, right? Uh, and then a few others, right? So, so, so I think, you know, I, I really doubt that Google puts $500 million on a company just because of some hype or some, there must be something behind it, right? Uh, the other way you could look at it is that it doesn't matter if they have something or not. When you have 1.4 billion in your pocket, no matter what you do, you're going to come up with something, right? 1.4 billion is not, you know, just it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of money, right? So, so, so you can, you can they, I think they will, soon we're going to see a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, things uh, in this area. Of course, there are others. Again, these are prototypes, so I didn't want to put, but uh, in the VR and AR and MR area, so this is uh, virtual reality, mixed reality, augmented reality. Uh, there are also a lot of products and prototypes that are being discussed. And uh, 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 Intel, for instance, has 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 one such uh, prototype that was demonstrated not long time ago. Uh, uh, that uh, that is like a like an Oculus Rift uh, VR glass, but uh, it actually. Is, 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 is allowing you to interact, see you know, the, the world around you, etc. And of course, uh, there are also lots of other variables, if you extend the meaning of variable, uh, where uh, it's not really sensors about you, it's the sensor sensing your immediate environment. Example of that are things like that. So who knows move? This is move. It costs one Swiss franc or one dollar if you want to download the app. It, it only relies on the information your mobile phone gives you in terms of acceleration and GPS. And only with this information, it can analyze and tell you when you walked, when you were in a car, or, 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 and it is even smart to know when you were on a plane. Because usually in a plane you turn off and you are in an airport, and then you turn on your mobile phone in another place. So you know it doesn't take a genius to know if you 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 turned off in an airport your mobile phone and then 
the, the next GPS information is another airport in between you have been in a plane, right? Uh, so, you know, you cannot leap. Uh, and uh, maybe you can even, uh, but, you know, uh, it's very rare that happens, right? So, so there are all sorts of things. In fact, I really, I really uh, recommend, I have, I have this, uh, one, one Swiss franc is not, not that much of an expenditure. It's very interesting, very, very interesting. Oh, is it? Well, when I, when I used it, it was one, one Swiss franc. Maybe, uh, maybe on Android, I have an iPhone, so. No, iPhone. An iPhone also is free, so it's even free, so try it. Now it's free. Uh, uh, this one, I, I'm sure you know, there are lots of wearable cameras. Now these cameras, this example is a clip because it exists actually, you can buy it since many years. There are all sorts of uh, variants of it that are appearing. It's, using, it's being seriously used now uh, in the United States and some other countries uh, with the policemen, right? There have been a few problems, right? Recently and people get killed and nobody knows why uh, it happened. And now all policemen, actually in many places in the United States, they have these wearable cameras that, that basically show what they are doing. But these cameras can be used for all sorts of other things too, not, not only for this. Another one I like, this is also extremely interesting, and I'm going to come back to this a little bit later. It's, uh, it's another app. It's called MealSnap. This is one of many. Of course, there are much better ones, so we're going to have uh, uh, Professor Aizawa tomorrow actually tell, tell us uh, a few other alternatives. I'm sure that Ed Delp is going to tell us a few more things. There are lots of actually things around. This particular one, it's an app. You, you just take a picture of your meal, and it's a little bit like the wine Vivino one, but this is this is really for any food. So you take a picture, it either immediately analyzes it and tells you how many calories it has, how many vitamin and what it is, etc. Or it uh, it actually I don't know why, but I I have it actually. Uh, sometimes it says uh, okay, I've got to analyze it, and then like three hours later you have the information. I don't know, maybe they have some people uh, in some place, uh, cheap labor, uh, they tell them if the system cannot recognize it, tell them you know, to, to do it for them by hand. But with the advent of uh, analytics, deep learning, etc., these things are becoming easier and easier to be done, right, automatically. There are all sorts of other variants. Uh, this, is, uh, this is another one. Uh, uh, by Google. So this one is a sensor that is more than just visual. It also gives you depth information. And things are really going and can go very far, right? Uh, here are four examples. None of them is a product. Some of them, again, is not very clear, but who knows this one? This is a digital tattoo. It's wearable, so don't worry. Uh, you, could, you could take it off, right? It's not permanent uh, tattoo. It actually does, uh, it can, it's a sensor. And in fact, there are variants of it that have even no energy source needs, right? Uh, this one is even more interesting. So this is a finger, right? So this is the finger, you know, print. Thing. This one, actually, you put it on the skull, and it gives you brain activity. It's not based on electroencephalogram, which is electric field. It's based on ultrasound which has very interesting properties. And this is the first prototype. You could imagine these things can become as small as uh, a hair, right? And then you can implant in very easily in your... Uh, probably many of you have heard about the, the, the project that, uh, that Google has. Uh, we tried to get them, but uh, you know, it didn't happen. Uh, uh, this, is, this is a variable that is, that is not really like to, to overlay images and things like that that you would have loved to, to see for augmented reality. This one actually, by analyzing the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the tears, it actually tells you if you have how much uh, sugar you have in your blood and you know, it's, these are interesting things. And this is, this, this is the only thing that you can actually buy today, uh, which is, well, bulky, but still a wearable thing. Now, I want to spend how much more time I have? I don't remember the Sorry. 10 minutes? 15. OK, so I have plenty of time now. So I want to spend actually the rest of uh, uh, the time uh, to share with you actually some, 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 some of my own conclusions. Um, the first thing that I think we should be very um, 
aware of is that there is really, in these wearables, there is really far more than, than meets the eyes. We are really often looking just at the tip of the iceberg, the visible part of it. The invisible part is, is, is probably far more impressive than the visible part. To make my point, I want to give you one example. This is a, not a very, very old, but not a very, very recent uh, example. Uh, some of you know already about that. But uh, let me show you uh, 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 this and tell, explain that graph for you. So in fact, this is, this is time of some day. Uh, it's uh, 9 PM. And then 11 p.m., 1 a.m., so this is basically during night, until 7 a.m., or even 8 uh, or 9 a.m. And uh, vertically, you see a number of curves. These are people who were wearing the jawbone device, the, the wearable that actually, among others, can tell you if you are sleeping or not. And uh, the information has been received, of course, by the cloud uh, service of Jobon. So Jobon has received this information. It's anonymous. They don't know. But because of the mobile phones uh, are sending it, they actually have also GPS information. Now, you see different colors here. Different colors correspond to different uh, areas. Now, uh, the red one is Modesto Santa Cruz. So this is. In Northern California, but the south of Northern California, right? So it's, it's like an hour, an hour and a half south of San Francisco, maybe two hours south of San Francisco. So you see that at 9 PM, almost everybody was up. Then people, you know, people in California, looks like they, they really sleep late, right? So, so uh, at 3 AM, almost everybody was sleeping. And then people wake up, right? So this is what you would expect, right? So the more we go into the night, the more people are sleeping. And then uh, they start waking up, the more we get closer to the early morning. But then we have the location for a few other places, San Jose. So we see that in San Jose, which is a little bit up north, but still not south of San Francisco, we have, a, we, have, we have a small disconnectivity here. Some people woke up and then slept and then woke up again. When we get to San Francisco itself, Oakland, Santa Rosa, we see quite a few people woke up and then went to sleep. When we go to Napa, so this is north of San Francisco, we see a lot of people woke up. Then some went to sleep and then woke up. Now, except for people from California, we have a few here. Anybody has a guess what happened? Earthquake. There was an earthquake. It's, it's a, actually quite interesting, right? So people have become like earthquake detector, <laughs> thanks to their wearables, right? And it's not only detecting there was earthquake. You could more or less know where it was, right? So definitely, it was closer to Napa than it was to Santa Cruz. Right? Nobody woke up in Santa Cruz, all people. So this kind of, this is just, just this is really a very, uh, very trivial example. Of, of the type of things you can do behind these devices. And, uh, and, and the number of things you can do with this kind of devices is just mind boggling. So I think really, at least this is my conclusion. Again, please disagree with me. I think these wearables are going to really revolutionize the age of information, going to open a new age of information. Right? People call it Internet of Things. And uh, in fact, uh, the first person who coined the, the name in, uh, 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 in the Internet of Things, now I don't know if it is true or not, right? But uh, you know, on the web there and Wikipedia, they say uh, Kevin Ashton, who is a British scientist, was, and he was behind the first company that successfully did this, these RFIDs. So he coined this, this, this name of of uh, the Internet of Things. And he says something like, IoT, Internet of Things, could turn the world into data. That may look nothing like a statement, but you think about it, it's a lot of things. The whole world, the atom-based world, can become 
all information based, right? Now just think about it. When you can turn things into information and then smartly analyze that information, lots of things happen. We know that the world of retail changed. Amazon exists as the biggest book company in the world and created lots of mess for the traditional book company because of that, right? The biggest taxi company is Uber, right? They have no taxis, just the information that made it, right? It's, it's shaking up and down, you know, if, if there was not because of some legal reasons that people are really, you know, trying to interfere with them and stop them, uh, nothing would have stopped them, right? Because it's a win-win situation, especially for us, right? I don't know, I travel a lot, like many of you. Uh, you go to some countries, you don't even speak the language. Uh, you just need to have a Google, and then you don't even need to talk to the guy. It takes you the place. You are sure that he's not taking you all around. You don't even need to have the currency you paid with. The, it's, it's really to like, a, like a perfect solution. And these examples, there are many, many of these examples. Hotel, travel, all. So, so if the Internet of Things or wearables are going to turn our lives into information. Well, a number of other industries, including some industries in Switzerland, like the food industry, like pharmaceutical and watch industry, will be affected by it. It's just the next. They are just next in line. Just normal. They are just next in line. It's just part of the evolution. So first statement I want to make is data is the king. The variable, of course, and you know, this is not, of course, <laughs> nobody says it's not, the, it's not important. Without it, nothing will exist. But the variable is not enough. It's the data behind it that starts making it, and what you do with the data, that, that makes it very, very, very interesting. Of course, devices and sensors and variables in general are, of course, also important. They are the queens. But uh, don't think when I use the word queen, it means like it's the queen of the king who has all the power, which is data. No, it's the queen. It's like queen of England, right? Yeah. Her husband has less power and less influence than she has, right? So, so they are queens in the, meaning, in the, the same meaning as, as, the, as the kings, right? Very, very important. But that's not enough. The software is extremely important too. Some, not every country in the world is, is, is based on royal uh, 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 system. So, you know, some of presidential, we have one not so small company that is now going through reelecting one. So, having Good software is extremely important too. And you want this software, of course, if you want to really have it successful, ideally you want it to be open source, extensible, you want it to have to be reliable and easy to, to use, right? You don't want to have PhD to be able to update it and things like that. Of course, data management and the analytics of it is also extremely important in that. Interoperability is has to be there, except if you are the Google of the world, or the Apples of the world, or Microsoft of the world. You cannot afford having end-to-end -end solutions. And in fact, even these companies, if they do it too much, the European Commission or some other antitrust goes after them, right? So you cannot just you know, think that, OK, you know, I, have, I can do it, so therefore I will do it. It's very important to, to make sure that interoperability is there. It's very rare that people uh, become prisoner of only one company or one service provider. People want to have choices. And they want to be, have the freedom to switch. And uh, no matter how good you are in something, you cannot be good in everything that represents that thing. So you want to have choices. You want to have interoperability. 
maybe the most important one, and this will be my really more or less last message, is that all these, everything I told you, don't matter if we don't have what people call a killer app. Something that makes them useful. It's great to have all these devices and things like I showed you. But at the end of the day, users, they're not going to, to really use it in long term if you don't have something compelling that really shows the added value. I can give you my own experience with the 30 plus smartwatches that I used, including Apple Watch, that I still wear. But the only reason I wear the Apple Watch is because, well, it's an Apple Watch, right? <laughs> right? But uh, I bought it more than a year ago. It was very interesting to show around and play with it and uh, you know, say, have you seen my Apple Watch? Uh, right? But now it's a watch. It's a watch. I, could have, I can perfectly wear also a Swatch or any Casio watch or anything else. It's just a watch. The only difference is that this device cost almost 400 US dollars. Now it's, some of them are cheaper, right? But let's say in Switzerland it's 400, right? But maybe in some other countries it's cheaper. In US I think it's 300 or 200 something. Sorry? That particular model is 499. 499, so it's even more, right? So when we bought it, even more, right? Now let me, let me show you another device. Yeah, this is a device I'm going to circulate. I actually bought it for this event. Is that a it's, it's not a counterfeit. In fact, if you turn it on, it says, you, you know, to turn it on and off, it, when you turn it on, it says smartwatch. It's the name of it. <laughs> the name is smartwatch. It, it strangely looks like this one. It has a sensor. This one is series one, so this is the old one. This one is, is, is waterproof, so it is already series two. Uh, it has even a camera. In fact, this is a camera. It's not the crown, it's a camera. It has, it, you can put an, a, a SIM card in it, and it can be autonomous telephone. And it has a lot of other interesting goodies it can work with both Android and, 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 and iOS. I have absolutely no, no share in this company, okay? I don't even know them. But I found out, and except for some of you who are my Facebook friends, how much do you think it costs? How much does this one cost? 50? Yeah. It costs $38. <laughs> And the shipping is free. <laughs> That's 38 US dollars? It's 38 US dollars. And I can. It's got, and it's got a camera. And it's got, it's it has a camera. It has everything. So, it's got like a 3G so what's the catch? What's the catch, right? It's stolen. It's stolen. No, no, no. It's, well, you know, I ordered it actually. I ordered it for EPFL, right? And, and I checked if it is legal. And it is legal. It's perfectly legal. It's perfectly legal. So it's perfectly legal to purchase this, but I don't recommend. Okay, because and if you you know if you're my Facebook friend, uh, you can go to the to the URL. Uh, it's on my Facebook page. Uh, you could order it. Uh, some of you have actually asked questions uh, about how they can purchase. But I tell you a few things. First of all, if you lose your hand because it explodes and cuts off your hand. Uh, because of battery issues, don't come after me, okay? <laughs> I'm just telling you, don't use it, all right? If it gives you rashes and you have to go to doctor and spend thousands to cure it, don't ask me. And obviously, I just received it. I don't know, maybe next week it won't work anymore. But there's one other issue. It, I've, I've heard of other of these cheap devices, and what they do is they're sending your data back to the company and then the company... That's a very important issue we have to talk about too. We can just turn around and... Absolutely. So I'm circulating this, uh, you know, when you get bored, you could have and play with it. But please tell it, uh, give it back to me, okay? Don't put it in your pocket and leave, all right? <laughs> it's cheap, I know, but you know, it, uh, it doesn't belong to me. So we need really good, good uh, you know, com because the device itself 
if you really, you know, the device can be very cheap, right? Now, this is maybe an extreme example, but I, when this, this device is 38, I hardly think that this device is 300, uh, 400 even, right? There is something really uh, wrong there. And uh, so I think that what we want to do here is, 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 is to really see a little bit behind what are the use cases. Now, I personally believe, and I don't pretend you have to agree with me, I think the dietary assessment and the well-being can be an extremely important enabler of the wearable technologies. Wearable technologies, if it's just to, 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 to signal you, you know, your emails and things like that, I don't think we will go far, right? Now, you may have others, LifeLog, I know that, uh, uh, Aizawa, you have worked on, on this also. It just basically gives you an automatic log of what, what you were. You know, some of us, we have short memory, right? We need somebody to tell us, you know, what we did yesterday uh, or a month ago. And, and probably a, a number of others. And in fact, tomorrow, we're going to have a few of some of these faces you're going to see. We have actually started, in fact, thinking about that. We have some reflections about, about really this. Uh, uh, these are actually some of our meetings. So this is Professor Aizawa, who's been, uh, and he's going to make a presentation tomorrow. Uh, Professor D Ed Delp, uh, who's going to also, he has extremely tremendous uh, experience in, in this whole area of dietary assessment and, and well-being and, and connected to health. Uh, Professor uh, Ramesh Jain, who is also from UCR Wine. And we are hoping, you know, that this, this consortium we just started, so it's, uh, we are hoping that some of you take an interest and we can actually together really make some compelling. And I, I can tell you health, well-being, and I think that Ramesh is gonna talk about that at ex much more extensive way that I can, uh, about this is extremely important, especially baby boomers like me. I don't wanna die <laughs> soon. I wanna live forever. Okay, and one of the ways to do this is to really have a way to really monitor my, 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 my general behavior, uh, what I eat, what I, uh, not only how much I slept, you know, uh, or how much uh, calories I burned, right? Uh, based on my weight, age, and height, I know that I have to spend uh, about 2,500 calories per day. And believe me, I spend 3,000. The problem is not there. The reason I look like this is that I probably have an intake of 5,000 per day, all right? So that's where the problem is. It's not the spent uh, amount that is spent. Uh, so what, is, what does all, uh, all this mean to us? So this is my real conclusion. Watches and wrists are not the only battlefields. Let's not really forget that there are other areas. Face and watches are not all of them. Um, the entire body actually is. And we have to think, I'm not saying that it doesn't mean that the, 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 uh, the, you know, the hub uh, business model where, where the watch is going to receive everything and, and, and communicate is, is compelling, maybe it's interesting, uh, but, uh, but, but just everything around the wrist is maybe not. It's a little bit short-sightedness. Uh, we have to learn lessons about all the others, right? Usability, design. And we're going to hear today uh, some, some, some interesting uh, 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 um, presentation about reliability of the thing. You know, uh, I also wear one of these health bands. This one is Joe Bond. This is the number three I have been replaced with since I bought it six months ago. So in fact, uh, in average, every two months it broke. Right? And the previous ones, I actually had a few of them. Of, out of the 35 smartphones, I ha uh, smartwatches I have, uh, a good two-thirds, so about 20-something, are dead in less than a year. They don't work anymore. Right? A watch, Swiss watch, lives several generations. How does it happen? Are, are Swiss Martians? Do, did they eat something special that we don't usually do, eat? <coughs> or is it because they, because actually most of them are French, you know, all these people, who they, they are coming from France or, you know, so it's not because they, it, there is something else, right? So maybe some of it we're gonna hear, here, right? It's not enough to make extremely compelling devices. You wanna have devices that, uh, that are also reliable. And of course, you know, this, uh, I think that this, this issue of, of compelling application is very important. So I, I, 
I, I, I shared with you what I think is the compelling application. I absolutely, again, repeat, I don't pretend this is the best uh, one. Maybe there are others, and I would really love to hear throughout today and tomorrow more about that. And uh, we are going to hear, of course, presentations, but also your, your reaction. Thank you very much. I think that I'm going to stop here. How am I doing with time? Good? Okay, thank you.